leave me a comment or suggestion down below. And a few weeks ago, Raquel D'Souza, hey girl, hey, asked me to make micro paneer and I thought, Raquel, I like you, so I'm gonna do it. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make this wonderful mutter paneer. Mutter means peas, and paneer means cheese. So we're gonna have peas and cheese for lunch today. Let's get started. So this is paneer. It is fresh pressed cheese. It has a similar flavor to ricotta, so super, super mild. And you can find this in the refrigerated aisle of your grocery store. If you can't, let me know, and I will do a tutorial on how to make paneer at home. And all I'm gonna do is gonna cut it up into these beautiful cube-like shapes. And I like my paneer to be on the larger side because I like to be generous with it. So I'm just gonna cut down this way. So I have a frying pan on medium-high heat. I'm just gonna add a touch of oil because I wanna brown up this paneer and get it nice and crispy. And you just wanna basically lay it out in one layer, that's the sound. And don't crowd the pan, because you wanna make sure that all the paneer gets brown on all sides. And that takes about three to four minutes turning every so often. Okay, so my paneer is nice and browned on all sides and that really intensifies the flavor of the paneer. I'm just gonna set it aside and we'll start working on our other ingredients. So tomatoes are the base of the gravy for the macho paneer. So I have two medium-sized tomatoes that I've chopped up. I'm just gonna give them a whiz so that they get nice and smooth. I just heated up the same pan that I cooked the paneer in, and in goes a little bit of ghee, which is clarified butter. If you need the recipe for that, it is also on my channel. I will link it below. And just let that ghee melt. Yes, girl, just like that. And for the base of the gravy, I'm gonna go in with some onion, a little bit of garlic, as well as some freshly grated ginger. And I just wanna cook these out until they become, oops, <laughs> nice and fragrant and soft and slightly brown. Okay, my onions are this beautiful golden color and they're nice and soft. To that I'm gonna add my spices. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit of chili powder, some gloriously yellow turmeric, which is gonna add a beautiful color and flavor, as well as some citrusy, coriander. And you just want to add the spices now because you just want them to toast up, release their oils. But again, this process, it only takes about 15 to 20 seconds to heat up the spices. Any longer than that and you risk burning it. Right, that smells amazing. To that I'm going to add my tomato puree. And then to intensify the tomato flavor, I'm going in with some strained tomatoes. And I find that strained tomatoes have a super concentrated tomato-y flavor, so I'm gonna add that in as well. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to taste, and then I'm gonna cook this on medium heat for about 10 to 15 minutes until this really reduces down. You want the tomatoes to take on a darker, more orangey, caramelized color, and then it's ready for the next step. While my tomatoes are bubbling away, I thought I'd show you how to make cashew paste, which is gonna help sort of make the gravy super thick and rich and luxurious. So I have a little bit of cashews in there. It's like half cashews, half water, and I'm gonna give it a blitz until it's super smooth and creamy. My tomatoes have had a chance to really cook down. You can tell that the texture is so much thicker than when we started, and their flavor has really concentrated. Now at this point, I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar just to balance out all the flavors. Because the tomatoes are slightly acidic, you wanna balance that out. I'm going in with a little bit of my homemade garam masala. If you want that recipe, it is also on my channel. And I'm gonna also add something called kasuri methi, and kasuri methi, our dried fenugreek leaves, and they add a sensational flavor to this mutter paneer. Give that a nice mix. Doesn't take too long for those spices to heat up. Oh my god, it smells so good, you guys. And then, as you can see, this is super thick. I'm gonna add a little bit of water to loosen things up. 
I'm gonna add my peas, and these will take just a few minutes to reheat, as well as my paneer, waiting to join the party. And last but not least, I'm gonna go in with a couple of tablespoons of my cashew paste, and you see how creamy and thick that is? This is a great alternative if you're vegan, and you can't use cream in recipes, cashew cream is a great alternative. And you just wanna give that a nice mix. Oh, and you see that color transformation just from those cashews. It's just making everything so rich and thick and luxurious. So this is cooked for an additional like three to four minutes because really the paneer is cooked. The peas just have to reheat and you see how luxurious and thick that cashew paste has made it. So gorgeous, I am ready to dig in. And this is what it looks like when it's done, you guys. I really wish you could smell it. It smells amazing. And as always, popular garnish for Indian food is a little chopped fresh coriander. I can't help myself. See this little brown bit? I've been staring at this for a little while now. A little sauce, paneer, pea. Let's go, let's do this. Sensational. You know what? If you're a meat eater and you're not used to vegetarian cuisine, I dare you to try this recipe because I think it will convert you. The paneer has this beautiful richness, crisping it, it's crisping it up in the pan made such a huge difference to its overall flavor and texture. Those peas are nice and tender, and that gravy is super mellow because of that cashew cream and the spices. It is so good. You can pair this with a little bit of rice, some naan or chapati, and you are good to go. A beautiful vegetarian curry that you can make in a pinch at home. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. If you did, feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, please feel free to leave me your suggestions and comments down below. Until our next Indian adventure, I will see you later. Bye.